Hello, beautiful people, brothers and sisters, in Christ, in Yeshua. We are brothers of other mothers, or whatever, you know. Um, we are from different nations, tribes, uh, tongues, but we're one in the kingdom. We are one in Christ Jesus. We are one. He puts us together. He gives us little pieces and puzzles. You know, and we put all the little pieces and puzzles together. We see in part, we know in part, and when he comes and reveals and goes and gives us the step back, third person perspective, and go see the puzzle. You were looking up really close at this puzzle, that puzzle, this puzzle, that puzzle, and your other person was going this puzzle, that puzzle, right? And sometimes two of us or three of us, you know, are there, and he's in our midst, and we're putting these pieces together, and you know. Little tap on the shoulder. You pick, take this other piece and put it right there. Hey, look, it fits. Yeah. Anyways, well, this is um, number 12. And why I call it number 12? Well, I'm reading the book of Daniel, chapter 12. And there's Revelations, chapter 12. And 1 Corinthians, chapter 15. And 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4. You know? Um, they all kind of tie together, which I I've, I've always seen them as kind of like different. Didn't know how they fit together, you know. Definitely thought First Corinthians and First Thessalonians. There were some similarities there. Well, let me get into it because Revelation twelve talks about Michael. Daniel chapter 12 talks about Michael, okay, the archangel. And what's 12 plus 12? Mm, 24. Uh huh. Reverse that because I see things backwards. It's uh, 42. And how many months does the Antichrist get? 42 months do they trample the outer court, okay? Um, and you have 12 and 12. Put them side by side, and 1 plus 2 is 3, right? So if you have a 12 and a 12, you get 33. Okay, just things I see. All right. Um, so at that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. Now, he stands up, which means he was sitting down, waiting, right? So he stands up. Who does he stand? Watch over who? The sons of your people. Now, th this kind of hit me. It was like, God talks about Jacob or Israel, you know, and talks about them in their future tense of um, the daughter of Jacob or the daughter of Israel or the daughter of, of Jerusalem, right? He's talking about the offspring, and, and I thought about this, an orange, right? Inside the orange is a seed. The seed falls to the ground, grows into a tree, and bears more fruit of like kind because it bears oranges that have seeds, and the cycle repeats, right? In the first seed, or the first tree, right, that um, God created in the Garden of Eden, all the generations of orange trees throughout history, past, present, and future, are technically in that first seed, or the first tree that the seed came from. Okay, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Um, so, same like us, right? When he talks about there will be a king on the throne of David forever, that lineage of David has to carry on. And you can see that, I think it's in the book of Matthew that talks about his genealogy of Yeshua, Jesus, right? So um, we have a lineage. So when God says he's the son of Adam, true. Because from Adam through Noah, all the way down King David to the birth of our Savior, there's a lineage. So he is the son of Adam. He's also the Son of God. 
So, because he was in the beginning. You can read that in John 1.1. 1, 1. Um, so, he's standing watch over the sons of his people, right? And so, we have this archangel watching over mankind, over the people of God, because we are all his creation. Everything is his creation. Nothing exists that wasn't created by him. And it's being held together by him. It says in Psalms, if he withdraws his breath, the breath of the Spirit, we turn to dust. Okay? So he's holding us together. That in itself, we should be grateful and thankful for. That every day we wake up and we're still here, right? Because Adam was made from the clay and it says that we will return back to the earth, right? Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Um, so, here's Michael standing over the people watching. Watching for what? See, we're supposed to be watching for Christ's return. Um, there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation. Now, a nation, in, in the description, means people, okay? Even to that time, right? That time, a specific time he's referring to. There's trouble, and people call that Jacob's trouble. Well, Jacob was renamed Israel. Israel had 12 sons, or Jacob had 12 sons and became the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, I'm not going to go too deep in it, but he says, and Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, And at that time your people shall be delivered. Delivered from what? From trouble. What is trouble? Trouble, tribulation is trouble. And trouble is tribulation. There's tribulation, which is trouble. And then there's a great tribulation. There's a distinction. You know, I think, now this is just me looking at the word and everything, that Revelation 6, when there's a great earthquake and the sun turns black and the the moon, right, and the stars fall from heaven. Um, that's a pretty great, and there's great earthquake, a worldwide earthquake. Um, that's great tribulation and all the uh, things that come after it. But let's go on. So he stands up at that time of the trouble. Uh, and the people shall be delivered. Not will be delivered, shall be delivered. And I've noticed that God does this where he's talking about, like, it's already done. In his realm of heaven, time is different. Like Second Peter. A day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. To him. So one day up there, a thousand years down here. Okay? It also works in reverse. One, time, one day of ours could be a thousand moments to him. Meaning he can slow down time, he can speed up time, he can stop time. Right. So now, what happens? The people are delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust. Now that means they have passed away, they're dead. Right? This is like Lazarus. Oh, he's just sleeping. I'll go and raise him. No, he's dead. You know, sleeping in the dust of the earth shall awake. What is that? Resurrection. We're dust, we're dead, we're in a grave, and we're being resurrected. We awake. Okay? Everyone who's found written in the book. Are there people that are not written in the book? I would say yes. Moses said, you know, forgive these people, you know, and if, if so, then blot my name out of the book of your life and let them live, right? He's like, he was going to sacrifice his life, his soul, so the people of Israel could live, right? Also says in Revelation, I think it's two, it's like, repent, change your ways, or I will remove your lampstand. I will blot your name out of the book of life. Yeah, okay. Um... So that means there are vessels of clay that are made for his mercy. 
and there's vessels of clay that are made and preserved to the day of judgment, the day of doom, right? To show his power and his awesome strength. So, so we know that the dead will rise, right? Those who are asleep in dust shall awake. Now, awake to what? Some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. So, well done, good and faithful servants on his right. Well done. Done what? What they did, right? An action. Um, good and faithful servant. Faithful, trusting him, believing him, that Yeshua died on the cross, shed his blood for the atonement of sins, past, present, and future, right? He did it all, right? And he said, it is finished. And a great earthquake and the veil was torn from top to bottom, you know, because there was three hours of darkness. Okay, you know, tell me when there's ever been a solar eclipse that's lasted three hours. All right. Or a great earthquake and the tombs were shaken open and the dead rose. Yeah. It's in the Gospels. You can read it. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, now, did they die again? Yes. Okay. I think this uh, next situation will be some will everlasting life. Shall awake to everlasting life. That's a resurrection to he's going to give everlasting life. Others are going to be everlasting shame. Now, Daniel chapter 12, verse 3, those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. So, when is this time going to happen? Well, he says, hey, Daniel, chapter 12, verse 4 of Daniel, shut the book up and seal it till the end of time. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall, shall be increased. Okay, do we have capability of traveling around the world in a day? Yes. Okay, do we have knowledge that's increased? Yeah, we can search Google, you know, and there's tons of documents, everything that are all online. You don't have to go to a library, you know, because... Say there was a library in, I don't know, say France, right? And it was only there. So you would have to travel there, check out the book, read it, right? Unless you had some way of somebody looking at it for you, writing in a letter, then mailing it to you, whatever, right? We Our knowledge has been increased hundreds, thousandfold. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so here we have... Daniel standing up during a time of tribulation or trouble, and, and people are being resurrected. Okay. <clears throat> now, let's go to Revelations chapter 12. Okay. There is a woman who's pregnant with 12 stars, right? And it's a time of trouble right for his people whose people Jacob how many sons did Jacob have how many tribes of Israel are there 12 okay and the and then being with childbirth she cried out in labor in pain giving birth right and then there was another sign of a dragon in heaven seven heads and ten horns over again. anyways um, he his tail drew a third of the stars and threw them to the earth. Now, how many angels disobeyed God in the beginning? A third of the angels. Here we have a third of the angels, right? That means two-thirds good guys and one-third bad guys. <clears throat> His tail drew a third of the stars and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman before she was ready to give birth to devour the child as soon as it was born. Okay? So the child hasn't been born yet. 
and he was going to devour him as soon as he was as soon as he was born. Now, I've always read this and thought, oh, this is this is Jesus, right? This is Yeshua, right? He's in the manger, and Satan wants to devour him before he was born. But the next chapter, she had born a male child who was to rule the uh, rule the all the nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and to His throne. Um, and you can see that that's in Psalms, uh, chapter two, verse nine, Isaiah chapter seven, verse fourteen, and uh, Isaiah verses nine. Uh, through 16 and I thought well okay that makes sense it's it's a uh, that was Jesus that was Yeshua he was caught up yes he was after he resurrected he preached for 40 days and then he was taken up and he's gonna return in like manner but here's the thing a male child now every Christmas there's a baby Jesus in the manger um, when Jesus went, after he died on the cross, and he was in the grave three days, and then rose again on the third day, and after he preached to 40 days, and then he was taken up, kind of an analogy of like, oh, I don't know, um, the ark and the waters, 40 days and 40 nights, and it was lifted up off the ground, and then finally came back down. You know, he was not a male child. He was a full adult. Now, he is the head of the church. We are the body. Right now, our head is in heaven. But we are still now here on earth. Do you think he might come back to claim the rest of his body? That would be maybe a harpazo snatching us away. Well, that fits in right here to uh, Revelations 12, um, verse 5. Well, it says to rule it. Uh, with all, all the nations with a rod of iron. Yes, he will. He also is granted us in Revelations um, that we will repent, we will rule the nations and we will judge the angels. Okay? Um, I don't know exactly where it is, but you can read it. It's in Revelations either 1, 2, or 3. Um, oh, here it is. <laughs> He brought me right to it, you know. I'm just amazed when he does this stuff. Uh, Revelations 2, chapter 26. And he overcomes and keeps my works until the end. To him I will give power over the nations. He shall rule the nations with a rod of iron and shall dash to pieces the potter's clay. All as I all have received from my father I will give to the morning star who's the morning star that's uh, Yeshua okay and he says who has an ear let him hear what the spirit says so we will be we are co-heirs to his inheritance now read in chapter revelations 3 verse 5 he who overcomes, I will clothe in white garments and will not blot his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before the, my Father and his angels. Okay? He will not blot your name out of the book of life, which means those that are being raised to everlasting shame and content will have their names blotted out of the book of life. So, how does this relate to Michael? <clears throat> well, Revelations chapter 12, verse 7. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, and nor was there found a place for them in heaven any longer. And the great dragon, Satan, was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world. He was cast to the earth with his angels, were cast with him. Okay. Are they here on the physical plane of earth? I don't think so yet. But they will be cast out. When? Michael stands up for his people. Alright? So, what happens in Revelation 12, verse 10? Then I heard a loud voice of heaven saying, Now salvation 
and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come for the accuser of our brethren who has accused them before God day and night has been cast down and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb which is Yeshua on the cross shedding his blood and by the word of their testimony and did not love their lives until death now we can see in, in um the fifth seal, the uh, the slain, um, of Christ under the altar going, how long until you avenge our blood? And what are they told? We will give you a white garment and you will wait. And I think that white robe or that white garment is a new celestial or heavenly body, something different than this mortal body. All right. How does this tie in to Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, 15, 51. Now, if you write that down, look at it, it's actually a mirrored image. It's 1551. So what does it say? Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Right? What, is, what did uh, it say in Daniel? Those... Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake. Wait, here it is, right? It's in Corinthians. We shall not all sleep, but we will be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, right? The last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will raise incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So, um, there's a trumpet sounding? Yep. Okay, does that mean it's part of the trumpet judgments? I've always thought it was. Maybe it's a separate trumpet that sounds. And what does that sound um, of the trumpet for? Well, let's look at Daniel chapter 12. At that time, the people shall be delivered. Everyone who is written in the name of the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust shall awake. So, it says, For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Okay? In an instant, in a twinkling of an eye. Thank you, Father. Um, a twinkling of an eye. And that just... Okay. Um, tau, Tav, uh, the ox in the sky and the eye. Um, there's a star that represents the ox constellation. Um, starts with an A, but I don't know if it's top of my hand. Is that the twinkling of an eye? Is that the trumpet? Um, May 18th, uh, Starlink, number 3752, is somehow tied to May 18th and the Sun the moon uh, I think it's Venus and the moon or Neptune and the moon I'm not sure one of those planets I think it's Venus um, do like a Vesica Pisces kind of um, you know the MasterCard symbol you know two circles and the intersect in the middle well they kind of do that on that day May 18th um, how does it all relate to this? I don't know. Maybe it's the twinkling of an eye. Because <clears throat> um, it keeps showing me 15 and the number 9. But, you know, here I am in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51. Right? It will be changed. Those asleep will be risen. So, let's go to first. Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 15 that's right um, so what does it say for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus right for this we say by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those we're asleep. Oh my gosh. So 
the dead will be raised, right? And then we will be changed in a twinkling of an eye. Um, and here's 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. Wait, Christ is coming himself. He's not sending an angel. He's coming with an angel, an archangel. How do I know this? Because with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, wait a minute, wasn't, didn't we just see that in uh, um, 1 Corinthians? Yes, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Oh. And so what does it say over here in Thessalonians? Chapter 4, verse 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. I think that's Michael, right? With the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ shall be raised first. Right? Then we who are alive... And remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. So comfort one another with these words. And here it says in, in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, But concerning the times and seasons, brethren, we have no need that we should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord shall come as a thief. In the night they say peace and safety and sudden destruction so that sudden destruction um, I think and this is just me kind of putting conjecture in there there's a war that breaks out in heaven with Michael and his angels at Revelation chapter 12 verse 7 <coughs> excuse me and the and who was cast down to the earth Satan <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and the angels. That'll be a horrible time. Excuse me. Thank you. Why? <coughs> well, <coughs> excuse me. It says in Daniel, chapter 12, verse 1, there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that time. Right? Well, has Satan and his angels ever walked physically um, on this earth? Uh, perhaps. But in the physical realm? Mm. All of them? Because we're talking a third of the angels, however many that are, and Satan and the demons and the Nephilim and the giants because in Noah's time this is, there was giants before and also after okay and he gave me a dream of the giants walking over mountains they were huge I mean 100 feet tall 200 feet tall they could walk over mountains they could walk over seas you know um, so that's pretty big What's the point of this? I think they all relate. From Michael the archangel standing up with the voice of the archangel and, and God, Jesus, Yeshua, being here with Michael, casting down Satan and his angels because there's no more place in heaven for them, right? And then we are, the dead in Christ are changed and raised up and as they're raising up, we change and we go up. You know, is this rapture? Well, I think as they come down, we go up. Um, but it's the voice of, of Michael and the trumpet sounding. And then, of course, if you look at Revelation 12, well, the man-child is taken up. You know, we are the body. He is the head. To so rejoin the body and the head in heaven, well, there has to be a gathering. And that's when Satan and his angels are cast down. So, some of this is just how I see things, the pieces fitting together. If you see anything, put it in the comments. You know, 
If any corrections, put it in the comments. If you disagree, put it in the comments, right? Um, but I think the timing of this trouble or tribulation uh, is coming soon. How soon? Soon. Soon to God is it's his timing, not ours. His ways are not ours. His thoughts are not ours. But his son, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, died on the cross. Why? Was there any other way? He begged God in the Garden of Gethsemane. Is there any other way? He didn't get an answer. And he went to the cross. An innocent person who had done no sin was made sin for us. He took all of our sins and he said, you can have my righteousness. I will take your sins. You are guilty and I'm innocent, but I will take all your guilt and you will take my innocence. And Father God looks down and says, well, blood's covering you. You believe and you have faith that what he did on that cross redeemed you. You cannot work your way into heaven. You know, there are good works, you know, and that's the difference between works and grace, and I'll get that in the next video. So, love you guys. Remember, believe in Him, trust in Him, His grace saves us through the faith that He gives us. All glory goes to Him. It's not our works. You know, love you, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.